And now we've got Johnny's score here, and I really enjoyed this. It's it's very, very fun. There's a few things that I think you need to think about in terms of balance and playability and so on and so forth, but I think the overall approach is strong, and it wouldn't take too long for you to, um, to adapt this to, like, you know, to get it ready for reading. There's a few things I want you to think about, though, like... You've got this uh, very discreet reaction to the strings, right? And what you're hearing in the um, in the the mock-up is very very close to what you will hear on stage, and that is that you've got the um, the strings, bum, 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 you know, that like really playing out. You know, even though you've got mezzo forte here, you got an accent there, right? And then you have the little answer by the flutes and clarinets and the the overhang of the resonance and just the the whole interest right in here is going to blot out the first beat or two of the response so like you the listener will sort of by the time they get to this beat they'll sort of hear what happened in retrospect in their mind rather than having heard it in action right and that's not what you want so i would say the way to deal with this is to really make sure that you have got a diminuendo down to piano or even pianissimo by the time you get to the end here, right? So I would say even mark your bass instruments here, your uh, double bass and contrabass, like, um, sorry, double bass and contrabassoon to piano diminuendo, right? Or, or even just even just have like a hairpin that just goes down to a pianissimo marking right? and the same thing here down to pianissimo so that you are not stepping on the toes of the downbeat it, it's that you know in in a general sense there is a phrasing problem with this and that is that the piano phrasing of Lili does not necessarily work right like here you you know you've got this Bum, 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 bum. And that is, this is totally taken right from the piano, isn't it? Right? And I talked about this before. The violinists playing Divisi will read this, and the, the, the lower players are going to be thinking, well, where do I slur and where don't I? Right? It's because you're telling the upper players to slur all the way through to here. And then what about the lower players, right? They've got a slur here, but they are also obeying this right here. So shouldn't you actually put the slur like, um, sorry, that size right here is just really, really small. Um, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, I, I can't. All right, so uh, just at this, at this staff size, I'd have to zoom in. Uh, yeah, so, so the slur should start way over here, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I mean, I, I love the fact that you've got uh, pizzicato and arco in two different groups working together, and you were careful not to add, you know, to have slur marks on that and so on. But yeah, just really think more about how the players are going to be playing these things and how they're going to be bowing them if when you have divisi. And then, you know, maybe repeat what you did before right you got a nice slur over this why not right here right what can't that happen all right so that was just um, I'm getting distracted by little bits and pieces but <clears throat> but yeah but that was one place where the balance of phrases right where I, would, you, I mean there's a, so many different things to balance it's not just the instruments against each other but the balance of phrases was was just not it was just not really leading from one to the other very successfully so here we've got a few things once again balancing phrases and balancing instruments so right in here you could probably notice no matter what you were doing the harp was just not coming through 
Well, that is the honest truth. And the same thing is true here with this Celesta part right in here. Uh, the scoring is very low for Celesta. I mean, only sounding an octave higher than scored. It really is better for it to be higher in, you know, even when you're trying to be really delicate here, you've got your flutes, uh, three, you're trying everything you can to get this to balance nicely and still the Celesta isn't coming out, right? It's just because you've got clarinets, you've got flutes, you've got your cellos, the overtones of these instruments are going to swallow up what's going on above it in Celesta. I'm sorry to say. And then everything else, like the harp, uh, the harp is playing all of this stuff in the left hand. That's not going to come through at all. And barely will anybody hear anything going on in the right hand if they're lucky, right? This is not this, you know, these octaves right in here, a bit fiddly for the harpist, but playable. They are not going to come through either. If everybody were marked piano and this were marked mezzo forte or something like that, or mezzo piano and this were forte or for, even fortissimo, then you could hear the harp come through better. But really just icing means icing. You're just going to have to pick a, an approach that is more audible. All right. This big chord here at the end is not too bad. But, you know, against mezzo forte crescendo strings and winds, it's not going to come through too well. Um, a big roll, right? So the, here's where you want your big roll because the, the roll separates out the the different notes playing on the downbeat. Rather, whereas if they play all together, it gets swallowed up by the attack of the uh, of the you know the bowing, the arco bowing, and also just just by the resonance of the woodwinds. And <clears throat> it's all well and good here to have um, you know to have soft brass, but they they will still compete very you know very much with the with the harp there is absolutely zero reason here to go to um to go to treble clef in the trombones right I mean, if we just get rid of this see it's completely playable maybe you had intended to go back to back to the um to the bass clef here, or I'm not sure, but yeah, but but don't score treble clef for trombones uh, unless you're doing something fancy and the and the player is with it and everything else. All right, and and here <clears throat> here's where you could have gone back to bass clef because even though this is all very readable for trombonists, it's just really not good to score. Uh, it's not good to score notes that are in the lower range of the tenor clef, right? You, just, you don't know what kind of player you're going to run into. So it's always better just to be safe. I would say here you put your, I'm sorry, put your bass clef right here, right? Much more readable. And then you can go to tenor clef right here. And all we're all good, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I got a little distracted. I got carried away talking about the harp and everything else. Sorry about that. But uh, the main thrust of what I wanted to talk about here is just the way that this is scored for all the other instruments. So um, not the strongest thing. Even you're having everybody really soft, you still want those flutes really low, and you've written them off three and so on. And how do the voices split up once you get to this interval here? It would probably would be better to have, if you really want this, you would want uh, split voices, right? So you'd have um, you'd have a second voice below here and uh, playing the same exact notes, and so you'd have one and two on top and three on the bottom. And then when you get to here, you just keep the you keep them in split voices rather than uh, joined intervals, and you continue on with the um, with the first and second on top and the and the third on the bottom. But really, this is just weak scoring right in here for the third player to be playing. It won't be audible. It won't be that audible, really. It's really more of a clarinet thing. This, these, in fact, I would just say all of this is really more of a clarinet thing in terms of, of audibility. 
<clears throat> yeah, I know you want it to be charming and everything else, but I would say you just would really have to rethink this passage if that's what you wanted. Okay, now right in here, um, we've got the horns and the oboes, and this stacks up really nicely, okay? But then this response here at the end, uh, you know, what? what is the dynamic at the beginning? You can't just say, hey, diminuendo to piano for the trumpets here, which already had a diminuendo, right? So what are they right here? Mezzo forte to piano? And, and even at that, there is, yeah, there really is just the, it just feels a little crude, the way that the instruments, the way that these instruments pick up after the end of this phrase, right? Uh, so, I mean, I don't think there would be any problem if this was marked piano diminuendo, right? And then just leave the end of the diminuendo um, without a marking, right? So I think that, that that works better within the context of this. So just, you've got your nice forte phrase, put a little diminuendo at the end, and then piano diminuendo, and that will be way smoother, all right? Okay. <clears throat> um, and then this was all really nice right here at the end. Ba -da -dum -bum, ba -da -dum -bum -bum. I was wondering where the, re where the resolution was, but I guess it's okay to end right there. So yeah, it's just aside from some of the things that I mentioned there, it's just a little strange. You go to a, a you know, the, the stress is right here in the middle of the bar. So you go boom, chung, right? So I mean, it's just like, I just feel that the timpani strike would have been better right here. Because when you put in the when you put in this strong beat, you take away from the sense that she of the sorry the sense of um, syncopation, right? So she's saying you know you know one and two three one and two three one two three right. So like like when you really emphasize the downbeat here, we're you know we we're no longer. Um, we're no longer syncopated, right? And so the the specialness of this note kind of hanging there, right? It just becomes a boom chuck, right? R rather than just a <sighs> suspended rhythm, right? Or suspended chord just hanging there in the air. I meant to say suspended rhythm. That doesn't make any sense. But a suspended chord just hanging there in the air. <clears throat> yeah, you know, like the rest of this stuff, it's all pretty it's all pretty nice here you could put in I would say definitely put in bass clef right and then go back to trouble here um, sorry so I'm just gonna add a little bit of trouble here preempt um, preemptively I was about to say peremptorily. It's early in the morning here. All right. So see, that's just so much more readable for your uh, for your players. And then right in here, even though this is still pretty readable, that might also be a place where you would have the fourth player in bass clef, just to just to. You know, I mean, it, it is readable in treble clef too, but it, you know, I, I just feel that it's that it's more direct. It's okay to throw in some bass clef here and there, even though players can read down to a written C with no problem at all. Um, it can just sort of, it's just, you know, on the fly, it can be a faster thing. Okay, so that's what I had to say about this score. Really enjoyed looking at it, Johnny, and... You know, it's it's great that you took the time to do this and really appreciate your support on um, on Patreon and, and oh, just like one other thing too, and that is this really high contrabassoon stuff, right? This, that is not going to come off too well, that high A, right? The forte just starting cold on a high G. And it's very, very exposed right in there, right? Because your bassoon family instruments are playing loudly and everybody else is playing soft, right? So this could sound pretty rough. I'm not saying that that's impossible. It's just not the greatest note to start cold on on a contrabassoon, 
okay? It's just, it's better for contrabassoon to work up to notes above E, I would say. So this E is great, but just, you never know what kind of instrument you're going to get, if the reed is in good shape, if the player is your third bassoonist who, you know, just got on the job last week. I mean, generally speaking, that would be okay, but the A is just a little weird, and I mean, I just, I feel that there are so many things that could do this better, like bass clarinet would just be the most beautiful, suave partner right under the bassoons. It just would be so much easier and, and cleaner, right? All right, so um, that is all I've got to say about this. Actually, I could talk a, a few things about a few more things, but I will just leave you there. And now on to our third and final semi-brev entry. <laughs> 